you done now? Oh, Brad, what have you done now? Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Brad Gilmore Show on demand. Welcome to one, uh, episode 128 already. Already coming back with the flames, son. Um, welcome back to the show. I hope you've enjoyed all the episodes with Avery as us, with Eric Zala, with Justin Roberts, with Brandon Caldwell, where we talked about the NBA Finals, which isn't going so great for LeBron. Today on the show, we got a special guest, somebody who I've been aware of for the majority of my life, and um, who's always been entertaining to me, especially being a Houstonian. Uh, we have Chingo Bling on the show today. Chingo Bling has a brand new special out on Netflix, a comedy special out on Netflix called They Can't Deport Us All. <laughs> That's the name of the special. And I watched it last night. It's really funny. It was shot here in Houston at the Heights Theater. And I was really surprised. Like, I, I always knew Chingo Bling was funny. I just never saw, I've never seen him do like stand up comedy. And to go from being a rapper to doing stand up comedy, I don't think is the easiest of transitions. And he pulls it off very well. And he knows how to kind of mold those two worlds together. And I mean, I remember he used to do songs like Taco Shop and, and he did um, a Hot Like Bling parody recently. Um, but, you know, it, it's interesting to see him mold those two together and make it. Um, funny and make it fun and make it enjoyable to watch and, and and he really he really really did good so I encourage you to go out and check out his special They Can't Deport Us All streaming on Netflix right now but hey I'm not going to waste any more time let's hear what Chingo Bling has to hear about his special right now on the Brad Gilmore Show on demand Chingo Bling joins me right now Chingo how are you doing today? Fantastic man doing great Hey, man, well, the Netflix special is out right now. They can't deport us all. I watched it last night, and I got to say, I really enjoyed it the whole way through. Very, very funny stuff. Why? What's been the reception on your end? How, how have people been receiving the special? Uh, so far, man, it's, it's been mainly like my core audience. Like, you know, folks have been supporting me for, you know, strongly for a minute. So right now, all the feedback is great. And I'm sure it'll, it'll start to reach, uh, you know, other people that probably aren't familiar with me and then, you know, it might be mixed reviews at that point, but you know, really, really, my concern is just uh, just keeping it pushing, and keeping it moving. You know, on to the next. Just work on the craft, touch the people, and uh, just you know, stay focused on what we have going on. Well, yeah, you got a lot going on. I know you're about to go on tour, but um, why do you think right now? You know, why was right now the the time for Chingo Bling? to come out and do a, a comedy special because you've, you've put out albums before you've had the, the comedic songs, you had the hotline bling remix or, you know, the taco shop back in the day. Why, um, why was now the right time to do a, a full fledged special? Um, well, well, for one, for one, I don't consider it, uh, like a full fledged special only because, um, a special in, in traditional sense is like one, one comic, 60 minutes, all jokes. And in my case, you know, considering I'm new to stand up and just, you know, considering the amount of material that I have at the moment, um, you know, we chose pieces of my current set and that's kind of what made the cut. But uh, but we have sketches. We have a few other comedians. But now is a good time because um, it's just been like a culmination just to build up. Uh, I got into stand up, you know, two and a half years ago. So it, it's a it's a fun transition. It's a it's a different art form. But um uh, you know, I, I just think it, it it lends itself to you know what we do and, and what I do and everything. Well, you know, you know, you say that the um, it's a different art form, and that's what I wanted to ask you about. You know, you've done the music thing for so long and, and been successful at it, definitely here in Houston. And what what do you think is the difference? What what have you noticed? Because when you're putting together an album, you kind of have a concept for the album. You get the tracks, you start working with producers, you're writing the songs to kind of you know flesh out that full vision for you what did you notice the biggest difference is between putting together an album and then putting together this uh they can't deport us all special well well two two big differences i see is um number one the set like in comedy your set is constantly morphing it's constantly changing so you're able to edit constantly whereas with the song you pretty much record it and then that's usually the version that you're performing out on the road you know what i mean so so that's one big difference is that it's just constant edit, you know, constant edit to get the desired effect. And then um, another thing, too, is like 
with music, a lot of times the artists, you know, we're having to like kind of prompt the crowd. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, it just, it just depends on who it is. But a lot of times, like in the rap scene, you know, if it's not like their hit jam or whatever, then they might only be like, oh, I know the hook or I'm going to go ahead and just kind of chill for this part. But with comedy, you can't have the audience chilling for, you know, for a minute with no laughs. Cause then that just means you're, you're not, you're not doing a good job. <laughs> so, so in other, in other words, with music, you have to like tell people, all oh, my ladies scream, Houston, how y'all feeling? Like you haven't to cue them and prompt them to, to induce that, that reaction. But with, um, with comedy, it's like, you have to be creating suspense and, and, you know, talk, you know, make them think and just induce the laughter, like make them laugh uncontrolled. Yeah, well, yeah, I could see how that's a big difference. Um, when did you, though, realize, Chingo, when did you realize that that this was your lane? Because you've always kind of flirted between the lines of, of, of just being a, a musician and being a comedic musician at the times. You know, like I said, the, the Hotline Bling remix and so on and so forth. When did you realize that this could be your lane of, of how to differentiate yourself in the scene? Um, well, once I started kind of like really just diving a little bit deeper into the, into the comedy realm, um, I started getting the feedback, you know, just getting, like, the desired results of, like, hey, dude, it's sold out. There's a line around the building. Like, you have these couples and just all these folks, like, in, in far-off places. And, you know, that that's a good sign. When stuff's selling out ahead of time and when you have, like, a line and, you know, people are just, you know, they're laughing, they leave – they, they got their money's worth and they're like, dude, I needed that or like, man, great job or whatever versus in the rap on the rap side, you know, sometimes it's a little hit or miss, you know, depending on the variables like, oh, the venue or the promoter, just so many little things can go wrong. And it could be frustrating, but uh, I was just getting all the right feedback on the comedy side to where it's like, OK, if I work, if I work really hard at this, you know, this can turn into something. This is a cool skill uh, to have. You know, um, you, you say that, you know, you, you're still working on material, only doing stand-up for two and a half years. What, what was it like the first time you stood up on, on a stage to do stand-up? Were you nervous? Did you think that, was the audience really reacting to you? Have you ever bombed uh, on stage? How did oh, it yeah. feel? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I bombed. I bombed several times, uh, especially the first time. The first time, I was still kind of full-fledged, like, I guess, comedic rapper or whatever. And uh, I was I was asked to host like a comedy event. I was like, oh, yeah, this is my first dream. Like, I love stand up. This is cool. And I can do this. I'm just going to kind of have some ideas on an index card. I'm going to kind of go up there and wing it. Um, besides, I was just the host. So the pressure wasn't on me to have material. All I had to do was really just be entertaining and bring up the actual, you know, comment. <clears throat> but even that was like a challenge. It was just like, OK, this is a lot harder than what I thought. And then even to this day. Anytime I like test myself, challenge myself to go up, uh, like recently in LA, I went up in, uh, in one of the comedy clubs out there and it was like, uh, just an off night. It wasn't really my crowd. And, uh, I was trying out some new stuff. So of course, yeah, you get a few laughs here and there just to see what, what bit, you know, has potential. But for the most part, yeah, it's a reality check. Like you, you gotta, there's just so many little skills that come into play to where, yes, you're, you're going to get hit in the chin like several times throughout. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's, it's one of those things like it, it's painful, but, you know, once you get through it on the, you know, on the other side, that's how you know you're actually improving and you're actually dedicated. No, I can definitely understand that. I, you know, I always hear the great stand-ups say you have to bomb in order to get mm -hmm. better. And I think that's just, it's like riding a bike. You got to, if you fall off the bike, you know what to do the next time. So you said though, in LA, that wasn't your crowd. What do you mean by that? What do you think your crowd well, is? The, I mean, right now it's like, you know, Chingo Bling fans for the most part, mm -hmm. like, you know, it's going to be Latin or Mexican American or, you know, people that get a lot of like the cultural references or, or little slang things or inside jokes type stuff with me. I mean, a lot of it is just kind of universal, but a lot of it too, it might be like, Oh, well, you know, I've never experienced a, a border patrol checkpoint. So I'm, you know, I, I'm just going to imagine or whatever, you know, but anyway, what I meant was like that particular crowd, it was like you know, zero Mexicans, you know? So some of the stuff that I kind of like would normally work 
with uh, like on the road that normally would kill when it's like a packed room and, and they're excited to see you. It's like these folks don't know who the hell they are. So it's a it's a more accurate test on, on the material you're testing. So, yeah, it, it's just it's just something that uh, it's just something that, uh, you know, I, I'm going to um, like I'm not a, I'm not afraid of that. So, I'm you know, I'm willing to work through whatever I have to work through just so that the, the material from now on, it could just be super universal and just really sharp because I feel like I'm starting to reach people that have no idea what uh, uh, they don't know anything about, like the Tex-Mex mixtape underground scene yeah <laughs> you know so some folks are because different folks know me from different things so some folks the you know some of the new people we're going to start bringing in like the whole thing like oh you do music on the side like that's not even going to be a, a thing i don't think they're just going to know you just as chingo bling the comedian yeah it's just like oh he was funny and i get it and you know he should be in a movie or something <laughs> <laughs> you know but you say like um so some of the people didn't understand the cultural references and stuff like that but when i watched the special last night I didn't know about a couple of things, but, but you know, the way that you set up the jokes and the way you kind of almost, the way the bit goes, it's almost, I feel like I understand it. Like, I never heard of Oho before in my life, before yesterday, yeah. and I feel like I got it. It's, it's when someone gives yeah. you the evil eye, right? Yeah, yeah. What's the end thing about, though? It, I don't know where it started. It might have been, like, in some indigenous, like, old, old, like, uh, medieval times type of thing but you had that aztec what, scene so I was, that's what i was just picturing in my head like an old yeah, aztec so, and ritual yeah i mean i'm actually curious i don't know honestly man i don't know if this if that's a thing that came from like spain you know and it was just like an old european thing because uh, uh there's an italian american comic named uh, sebastian maniscalco he's he's blowing up big time anyway he he talks about the evil eye and you know he he's Italian American, and he he describes it in his way, like the way it, it was in his household. But I was like, oh snap! Like there's, I didn't know that folks from like way out there, like maybe even like Greek, you know, Spain. I don't know, just Europe. You know, like it's it's still a thing. But anyway, yeah, the egg. It, it I don't know, maybe like a shaman or an old wise man was like, <laughs> I don't know how to make your baby stop crying, but I think this egg will absorb whatever energy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just find that to be the funniest thing. It's just like we put the egg on you, and you're all good. Um, you know, though, but you you play a lot of characters in in the special, which I find funny. Um, you you play Canelo Alvarez uh, amongst others. W why do you think that? Um, is for you being a character? Is that a because you know some guys, you know, they're better in character as a comic than oh, yeah. as themselves. Where do you think you stand? In, and then why why the characters? Did, did that just kind of come naturally to you? I mean, since I was a kid, like clowning in the lunchroom and stuff like i'd always have um like a voice at the time you know what i mean like say uh say it's like we're about to go on spring break and it's like oh dude like do that you know what i mean like at the at the in the lunchroom like do that one voice you used to do at the beginning of the year man you haven't done that one little character or, or mock the lunch lady or or do the teacher's voice or whatever so i'd always even like chingo bling when like when i first stepped on the scene that was like a over the top persona personality and it just kind of evolved and over the years and then it just kind of got blended with like me like as a as a person <laughs> like the lines just got blurred or whatever like he didn't <laughs> stay he didn't stay defined it was just everyone knew me as chingo but people didn't know it's like wait chingo technically is this it goes in this box but but anyway characters have always been um just something that enter that keeps me entertained. Like it's just fun. Like uh, you know, of course, just watching like Saturday Night Live or or Eddie Murphy or uh, Mike Myers, just different people um, that that could do that. Like Martin, you know, the Martin sitcom. That was mm -hmm. like my favorite sitcom ever, and he he played everything from Shanae to you know the security guard Otis and all the little kid, the snot nosed kid. He played his mom and. Uh, I've just always been a fan of that. It's it's just a, a cool, a fun little thing. And, and another thing too, like honestly, uh, a lot of stand-up comics they're so um, traditional and they're like purists about the art form that they strictly are like, I'm just funny and I don't have to do social media. The jokes speak for themselves. I don't have to be like a promoter. I don't have to be out there coming up with memes or, um, you know, it's just I'm a writer and that's it. But it's like because I don't subscribe to a lot of those rules, and I'm, I'm kind of like an outsider 
and um, I'm able to break rules and bend them. So it's kind of like I don't, I'm not going to limit myself. So obviously our show and our presentation, it's non-traditional. So, you know what I mean? If that makes sense. No, yeah, that makes sense. I understand what you're saying. Um, you know, you said though stand up was your first love a minute ago. Um, for you when you're growing up, like who are your who are the comics that kind of shaped you when you were going For me it was like the Seinfelds, the Chris Rocks, um, George Lopez was really great. Um, who were some of the guys that you liked uh, as a stand up? Uh, I might be dating myself, but uh, Eddie Murphy for sure. Yeah. Eddie Murphy was like uh the main stand up you know, person. And then, you know, once like Death Comedy Jam and like Comic View, <clears throat> stuff like that, of course, you know, Cedric the Entertainer, Martin. Uh, and then, of course, George came around and, you know, Cat Williams. And, um, and then like Kevin Hart's Hustle, like he's like a promotional exercising machine. <laughs> so like like yesterday, we had a long day. And the minute I spoke, like, like, oh, man, like, we just got to clock out. Like, I'm tired type of thing. It's like, you know, somebody like Kevin Hart, that's the person. It's like, okay, this dude is like, oh, I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, he he uh, he filmed, Kevin Hart filmed something in Houston. Uh, it was probably like a year ago. <clears throat> it was like at a small little venue over here, like near Third Ward. Oh, yeah, at 4212. Uh, yes, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, that day or whatever, um, my buddy was like, hey, come through. Kevin Hart's shooting this thing. And I took a nap. I didn't really believe it. Uh, I woke up from my nap and I looked at Kevin Hart's Snapchat just to kind of like, verify like is this dude really down the street and uh so yeah i see him like on a snap it's like dude he's at the gym where we go i was like we went to the gym this morning like how did i miss this dude he must have been upstairs <laughs> and it's like oh snap like he's really here this is happening and we went to the uh we tried to go to the taping whatever they were doing they're like y'all just missed him he just walked in blah 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 there's like a suburban right in front of the front door so i'm like okay this must be him in security and we're like all right well let's go get a drink down the street at a bar and we're there chit-chatting and stuff. Maybe like 45 minutes an hour. I decided to check his snap again just to see like if there's any uh, shots of inside of where they're filming. Just to see what's going on. Well, by then, he's posting a snap. Like he's already in a jet on a private plane. Which I'm assuming is like over there near Hobby. So I'm already kind of doing the distance. Like, okay, that's a 20-minute drive just from... Like I'm now I'm doing math. Like, okay. <laughs> did he, Like just mathematically, time speaking, like he must have... Let's say he did this snap as soon as he stepped into the private plane. You still have to factor in the 20 minute drive. I'm like, damn, he literally like went in, did what he had to do, and bounced, which tells me everybody in that room had to be prepared and ready for him so that he can do his job. Meaning, scripts are printed, like lights are set, batteries are charged, cameras, wires, audience is primed, and like everybody knows what to do. And, and I was, and the, the, the idea that came to mind is, you can't have anybody in your crew that's half stepping or has like the homie mentality where it's just, it's not a business. You know what I mean? Like every things can't be so relaxed and so chill to the point to where, Hey dude, like now he, because your batteries weren't charged, your camera wasn't rolling and your mics weren't set. Now he's going to, he's holding this plane now <laughs> because which, which is probably going to hold like, a book appearance or a shoe promotion or this new cartoon he was in. You know what I mean? So no, yeah. I mean, it, it, you gotta have, you gotta have everything together. And, and Kevin Hart's another guy kind of like the rock. You know, these guys are always working. You always see him on, on, on social media. And I mean, I heard Kevin on Howard yesterday. He's got like eight movies coming out this year. He's working on a new special. Uh, the guy is, the guy's definitely an inspiration. He's, he's nonstop all the time. But you know, when you talk about Eddie Murphy, for me, I, under I completely understand why Eddie Murphy was big for you. He was big for me as a kid, too. But Eddie Murphy, for me, was the first comedian who really seemed like a rock star, who really mm -hmm. kind of came across as, like, the coolest guy in the room, but he was also the funniest guy in the room. Sometimes, you know, it's hard to, to do that. You know, if you're the funny guy, you're, you're the funny guy. If you're the cool guy, you're the cool guy. But Eddie was able to do both simultaneously. Was that kind of the big thing that attracted? And he was funny as hell. But was that what attracted you to him? I mean, yeah, of course, like a lot, a lot of that came into play. I'm sure like, wait a minute, this dude, he's dressed like youthful and urban, like on some like hip hop type street style, but he's in a helicopter and he's selling out stadiums and he's in movies. He's on TV. He's on SNL. You know what I mean? Um, and I, and just to me, uh, because 
because Richard Pryor was like before, like I didn't get into Pryor to like, I'd had to research Pryor later. So, so it was kind of like, you're right. It's like, man, this dude's like a rock star. Like he literally like a bucket list all like by age 21. Like you're, you're doing stadiums. You got the record in this, you hold the record in this, you're in these huge movies. You're on Saturday Night Live. Like, damn. (laughs) You did it all in one fell swoop. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, and then, and then of course, like longevity. That's what's important to me. You know, longevity and just being consistent. That that's super important because anybody can be hot for you, but like, how do you sustain it and just keep it going and have like a retirement plan and just like, you know, what's the thirty year game plan on this? You know, um, that's always, you know, you know, I work with a uh, Booker T, WWE Hall of Famer, and that's what he said when he was out there wrestling. He said. In, in his mind at 30, he's like, I want to have everything together. I want to be retired by 30 and, and, and have my everything that all my bucket, you know, bucket list checked off and ready to go and be here for the long haul. Um, you're about to go on tour. Is that right? Uh, well, the tour hasn't really stopped. Just, just the only thing is um, right now we're taking two months off and then uh, the tour kicks back up like late August. And you're, and you're going to improv. So you're doing Chicago. You're going to be in California. Um, what is what is the tour going to consist of? Is it going to be like the special? You're going to have your your friends with you, kind of doing comedy. You're going to do sketches. What's going to be the tour? Yeah, it, it's it's going to be stand up. It's going to be me plus uh, two other stand ups, and uh, and then I'll I'll come and go about three times throughout the evening. So I'll come out early off top, and maybe do a lot of my new stuff that I'm working on, and then uh, hand it over to another comedian, like hand picked dudes that. Uh, that I vouch for and I roll with. It's not just, oh, this is the guy the club hired. That's some local dude. <laughs> you know, go get a beer, clock out. No, it's like this whole, we want it to be good from start to finish. And then I'd come back out probably like in character as someone else and then do some jokes related to that little world and then bring up the next guy and then close it out at the end. Uh, so so really the biggest challenge with, um, with the remainder of the year and the cities we have coming up is some of these cities we've been to before so not only have they maybe seen the special and been to a show, so they're going to want new jokes. Um, and that you and know then, that is another difference. I don't mean to cut you off. That is another difference mm-hmm. between comedy and music. You know, when you when you go back to the same city again, the fans will show up and they want to hear the same records because the, you know they want to hear their favorite songs. But it, yeah. jokes don't have that shelf life. Once they hear it, they're like, okay, I've heard mm-hmm. that. Give me something else, right? Yes, exactly. Because uh, once you know the punchline or the surprise, like the plot twist the reveal, then, you know, it takes the sting away. It's not going to be as funny, but, uh, there's a few exceptions. Um, like for instance, uh, fluffy gave her a blessing, like without, a, without a fail, every, pretty much every show, the audience is going to like request jokes at the end. So it's kind of like his encore. So either way he gives you an hour of fresh, fresh stuff. And then at the end, he'll do a couple bonuses to where it's like karaoke and the, the audience knows it verbatim. No, definitely. So, I, I, th- I think that um, mm-hmm. I think that you always though have to. I guess this is part of the tour though to go out, try the new material, see what works, see what doesn't work, and then mm-hmm. are we going to get another spe- or special? Are we going to get the um, the fully fleshed out special like we talked about, where it's chingo bling for an hour? Yeah, I mean, at some point. Uh, right now, we're, we're still playing with the format, and um, I'm you know I'm going to be patient so that. You know, the next one is a cut above, and it's just always improving. And uh, there's there's no rush. There's no need to drop another one in a year or anything. So um, so the main thing is, yes, there will be, like, several specials, you know, in case. I mean, you know, I don't really see that not happening, only because um, stand-up is one of those art forms to where, like, I, I never want to, like, get rusty in that regard. You know, I never want to be whack in that regard. So regardless of whatever movies, just like Kevin Hart, I think he's a good example, regardless of like how many movie projects and shoes and books and all these things you have going, you're still in the lab because in a way that's like hip hop to where it's like, you can't be whack, <laughs> you know, like that's not an option. You, you cannot be hacky and just lame. Uh, and you got to work. And uh, that's one of the, it's just the thing. That's the thing that connects you like to the people to where you never really want to get rusty because a lot it, it's tempting like a lot of people um once they start getting movie roles and stuff like eddie murphy even they, they just leave stand up alone and then sometimes like 20 years later it's like all right i'm gonna get back in there you know 
I'd rather be the other, the other type where it's like, no, I'm, I'm a writer first. And uh, I write all types of different things, including stand up. I perform that stand up. So even though there's other projects happening, we make sure we juggle <laughs> schedule. No, I mean, and but you know, also you gotta you gotta applaud the guys like you know, like the George Carlin who always said, "I'm gonna put out special a year," and you know, and, and he was funny until the very day that he died, and you know, he he never took a break from it. He always stayed writing all the time, twenty four seven, and you know, that's why he's one of the greatest of all time. And Chingo, I really enjoyed the special. Hey, one more question: Are you gonna are you gonna keep going with the uh, what did he said podcast? I really enjoy that show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna keep it going. Um, right now, there's a technical issue so right now i think it's like temporarily uh unavailable but uh i gotta get with my tech guy hop on the computer go over these passwords and uh but yeah for sure that's that's one of the things we're trying to like um carve out and like just juggle so that we want to we want to beef that i guess that department up so we want to have like a little set you know a nice little area set up designated just for that um you know what I mean? Not have to like move stuff around or go rent studio time. Like just have an area where you just turn on the mics. Let's go. So yeah, um, I'm a fan of podcasts. So that's one thing I want to develop. Okay, then I got to ask you, what are your favorite podcasts? Do you listen to Mark Marin or, or what are your ones you like to listen to? Um, there, there's all kinds, man. You have everything from like Tim Ferriss to uh, Barry Katz. Barry Katz is called the Industry Standard. It's more of like a stand-up type of type of uh, podcast Felipe Esparza has a good one um Joey Diaz has a good one there's there's a bunch there's a bunch so yeah there's so many yeah Mm -hmm. oh yeah no there's I know there's hundreds of thousands if not millions of podcasts to choose from so um everyone has their own favorites so Chingo Bling the tour starts back in August I believe you can get tickets at ChingoBling.com uh you got guys go check out the special on Netflix uh they can't deport us all uh, a very apropos name, I guess, for the time being. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, you, more stuff to come from Chingo Bling. Any new music on the horizon, or is, or is it full stand-up from here on out? No, no. Uh, music is like I was describing stand-up. That's one of those things where you never want to get rusty. You always want to have skills. And um, so, yeah, we we make time every week to get in the studio. And we're actually shooting um, a little video today for, like, I guess you could say it's like a parody. It's more like on the silly side. <clears throat> but uh but on like on itunes i have a ton of titles um i even have like a remix a project where i took a bunch of acapellas and then i sent it to producers and uh, they put their twist on it so i might put that together and call that a refried uh, refried bling so so like right now <laughs> yeah so like right now we're pushing the special so i don't want to like like blow my load if you will and just yeah. drop a whole bunch of stuff like right now so we even have like a music like a really polished music video done that's like ready. It's on private mode. I, all I got to do is press public. We just want to like be a little bit strategic a little bit. But um, but yeah, they can't import the songs on Netflix now. Uh, it's on the trending. Last time I checked, it, they had it under the trend now trending tab. And um, I don't know how it works with their servers, but a lot of people are, are complaining like it's shutting off or I'm getting an error. And <laughs> I'm assuming it's the servers. Yeah, and you I'm know, assuming like that's because so many people, people are watching it. it. Yeah, are streaming it. Yeah, streaming it at once, so they're like accessing it from a computer somewhere at a, at Netflix. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to hearing like, like the results of like, hey, this month you actually got like just as many views as some of these big Hollywood releases, and and I, I honestly don't doubt it, only because throughout my career, I've I've seen stuff where, for instance, like. The flea market, like people you met at the flea market, uh, just grassroots, blue collar folks you meet, you know, you bump into at H-E-B, like just regular folks that have been having you back, just regular working class people. Like it's, it's just um, it's just a crazy amount of support when, when you're grassroots, you know, when you're underground and when you're like paying attention to, you know, just the people you know what i mean so i i I wouldn't be surprised if it's like hey how is it that this you know how this big multi-million dollar release that's on here on this here uh netflix as well it's just not getting the same traction like what if what are the variables here so i'm looking forward to seeing uh like numbers or something hopefully i can get get my hands on some of that 
Yeah, you know, no, definitely. And that's such a Houston thing. You know, I mean, Houston's always been push it to the underground and then major people start to notice and say, hey, what the hell's going on down there in Texas? And uh, exactly. the way it's always been. Well, Chingo, I appreciate you making some time for us. I know you got a busy day today. You're going to shoot videos. You're getting ready for a tour. So much to, uh, so much going on, but they can't deport us all as the special on Netflix right now. Go stream it. Keep it trending. And let, let's, uh, let's look forward to the next one, Chingo. For sure. Thanks, man. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, Brad, what have you done now?